we've seen over the last um, really 10 years or so as far as uh, uh, irrigation water, both surface and groundwater, is, is a, a depletion. Obviously we've seen uh, tremendous uh, drops in the Ogallala Aquifer, uh, drops in our well capacity over the last 10 years, largely because of the, the multi-year drought we had. Um, Along with that then, of course, we had less access to surface water at the time as well. So, you know, uh, we're having to continually deal with less water from both ends, both surface water and groundwater. So any technology that's out there that we can help deal with that situation is, is something that we're interested in. I would probably add that uh, other than the water quantity, uh, there's also some water quality issues around this area. And that's something that uh, we are also looking at because uh, Sometimes it's going to set us back in terms of the limited irrigation or the idea of putting less water. If you've got some issues with the water quality, your tendency is to actually uh, add more because you'd like to leach out those, uh, those nutrients or those elements. Well, this project got started actually with a simple phone call one day. Dwayne called in uh, to the Garden City Company office and we got talking about technology in, in agriculture and one of the things that we were discussing was a lot of the new irrigation technologies that were out there and how it'd be uh, interesting to look at some of those technologies so one thing led to another Dwayne jumped in with both feet and we got started on uh, this project we first started out with just on a on a seven span sprinkler uh, three of the spans had eye wobs it's a larger type uh, mode of delivery of water uh, then we then we had uh, private entities come in, donate their time and labor. Uh, we have 30-inch uh, bubblers on, uh, on, one spa on one span. We have dragon line uh, in the middle of that span. It's broken into two with 30-inch spacing and 60-inch spacing. And then on another span, we have 60-inch bubblers. Uh, it started out just with that. And then we brought in more ideas with, uh, with more technology, with uh, moisture probes, and uh, et cetera. We're figuring out just not with visual but with technology on the best way to deliver the water to the soil without evaporation, getting the 100% getting out of a drop of water that we can without wasting any of it. Uh, one of the biggest things we looked at is what kind of tools we could help uh, Duane and Garden City Company utilize on these particular fields. And one of the things we did for them was uh, do some zoning through our MZB zoning system to figure out exactly where to place these probes to really understand how each uh, setup Dwayne had on the pivot affected uh, not only water capacity but um, runoff and other things that affect how that crop responds to water. This whole process is, is part of the Kansas, the 50-year Kansas water vision. Um, through that uh, water vision, they uh, established the idea of uh, implementing some water technology farms across the state, which would help uh, provide uh, resources for producers out there that are looking at different technologies uh, in terms of de de delivering water efficiently. And so that's a, a public-private mix. In this case, you know, we've had, uh, uh, of course, uh, Dwayne is a farmer, us is the, the landowner uh, involved, and we've got some private companies involved that have donated product and time and labor to it. But to oversee the whole project as well, of course we have uh, uh, K-State involved to make sure that, uh, help us set up the, the studies correctly and oversee and give us advice on, on uh, uh, things we can look at and, and different ways we can analyze the, the results. Uh, then, of course, you know, we have the Kansas Water uh, Office involved. They've, they've provided uh, resources as well to the project to help deliver that out, not to just so we can see it at what's going on, but that the public as a whole can see it and, and use the results as well. This, is, this project has just gotten started this year. We've just got some things into place. Uh, it's going to depend a lot on crop rotation. Uh, we've got some excessive rain, you know, but just trying to compile the proper data for, for another for long term to see how, how, what we can and cannot do and what is feasible and not feasible. One thing that we were really excited about this project is having to expand the plots, the research plots that we have on station and trying to see it applic applied in a, in a whole farm setting like uh, what, what we have here with Duane. So having that opportunity to work with the farmers, at least we will now understand not just the basic science or the basic hydrology of the apply application of water, but also the management system of what they could, pro of what the farmers could probably have to adapt to when they have this system. So, it's a, it's a good uh, mix of of what is out there in the research plots and also what the farmers are probably doing. And uh, 
we're excited to also bring in some some more people out here. In fact, we were planning uh, the field days and and some people that would be interested to see the setup that we have here. And I think that's a big opportunity for other people to to learn more about these systems. Well, the main challenge, you know, with the uh, beneficial rainfall we've had this year is just being able to you know differentiate any any results between the different systems that we had out there. But the um, you know, advantages, we're, we're just getting started on this project and so you get a year under your belt to see how each system works, what other uh, practices you may need to do as far as tillage practices, uh, planning practices, those type of, of things and so, uh, you know, moving in down the road, you know, that's a year experience you have with, with each of the systems and from that you can build on and, and look at uh, uh, results as different uh, conditions uh, come around. Some of the biggest challenges as far as a technology provider this year is just trying to figure out what could work on a farm like this, what new technology is coming that we could possibly implement next year, uh, not only on this circle but other circles in the area where we're trying different things. Um, some of that might be precision irrigation, some of that might be uh, additional imagery we can bring into play and then really uh, evaluating what, what measurement devices really work out here and can communicate and help the farmer be more efficient as he does implement this kind of technology. Um, on the pivot controls themselves, we're using, a, on this particular farm, you know, we're using a lens irrigation, we, we're using field net. And for, for next year, where it's really gonna come into work efficiently, we're going to be able to monitor our, our moisture profile on the corn and if say if we have a half circle crop of corn a half circle a mile we're going to be able to exactly see what that plant needs and at what time it needs it and then if we if we have the ability to shut it off for a day or two we're going to be able to do that with the wireless technology that we have here today the technology has really soared particularly in trying to gather those information now you don't have to go inside the field to get that information you could just look at your your cell phone or your your mobile phone or your computer and you will see what's out there and that gives you confidence in turning off the, the system. For example, right here, uh, we've got some rain coming in. How confident are you to be able to shut down your system? Perhaps not, unless you know what is on the soil and what you have, in, what, what you have stored. So those are some technologies to, that we are still trying to figure out. Out here in this field, we've got at least five types of sensors that we are trying to figure out which one is, is working. So we don't have the data yet, but uh, hopefully by next year we, will, we could give you an idea of which one is better for, for each of those fields. Uh, the biggest challenge of any wireless technology is obviously uh, signal to get that out and get that communicated to all the different tools we we're using. We're fortunate right in this area that we have a strong network that we can really utilize new tools that come along. Other areas aren't so fortunate, but this will be one site uh, where we can really uh, use data to our best ability to really test things and, and, and learn from that because at the end of the day it, it really is all about collecting data and making use of that data, making farmers more efficient with it, help them to understand it and how to utilize it on their farm and uh, their neighbor's farms. The reason for the 30 and 40, 60 inch spacing is you know there's a lot of belief I and mean, that's what we're trying to find out is do you have to plant in a circle? Do you, do you have to plant straight up and down? You know, when the nozzles go through the stalks, are they moving too much? Planting circles is new to us, but we did see some advantages to them. Um, I think Jonathan can com comment on this here in a second, but uh, I think uh, this year, like I said, once again, it geared us up. Next year, this project's really going to take off. We're going to have multiple circles, multiple populations. We're going to withhold some water from some circles. We're going to have some milo with the monitors in to, to see just how much we can stress it back and sell at an economical threshold, to make this farm work and make it profitable. One thing with, with some of the device that we have over here, particularly the Dragon, the dragon Line or the mobile drip irrigation, is the, is the necessity to be able to plant in circles. And that also is uh, applicable to the bubbler. Um, planting in circles is not new to many, to many places, but in our area, there seems to be some hesitations to go to, to that particular type of uh, planting. One is the technology. Uh, although there are already GPS-enabled tractors, there's still not a perfect circle that these tractors could be able to plant in. And we see some advantages in planting in circles because you create a microclimate uh, in that particular circle wherein you 
prevent the the wind from coming through your 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 uh, your field, and that reduces the evaporation that you could probably have in your in your particular field. And so, just planting in circles, I think there is already some gain that you could get uh, in terms of the in in conserving the moisture. But uh, we would like to see it. Uh, being compared with different types of applications here in this particular field. So we're, we're excited to see how it goes out at the end of the season. A long-term goal would be the sustainability. I mean, if you look at our where we are located in western Kansas, there's a lot of people that depend on the Ogallala. And we're just not talking feedlot, processing plants, ethanol, dairy processing, grain farmers. You know, I think if one goes down, it's going to affect us all. And I, I think, you know, if, uh, is there a possibility of, say, uh, 50 years from now, 100 years from now, that we can keep this water at a sustainable level? That, that's what I think the goal is, and I, I think it is obtainable. On our part, uh, I think our goal is to be able to let the farmers know what are applicable to their, uh, what are available technology that are at, at their uh, disposal. Uh, this is one way of them looking at these technologies and trying to see if this fits for their farm or not and maybe something that would be so, uh, that would be applicable to some of their management systems. So I think this is also a, a way for us to be able to let them know and try and see what could work for their farm.